Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, here with a few thoughts on the IBF middleweight championship between champion Sebastian Sylvester and challenger Daniel Gill. The fight is taking place this weekend. Now before I go further, just remember the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. In Australia, they know who Daniel Gill is. I believe next weekend his fame is going to go global. This is a very dangerous play. The fight is in Germany against one of that country's most popular fighters. IBF middleweight champion and favorite in this fight, Sebastian Sylvester. Right, but I'm just here to tell you, just based on my view of the film, I'm expecting the upset. It's not a big upset, it's a mild upset, but I'm expecting the upset. I'm expecting Daniel Giel to go to Germany and to thoroughly outbox Sebastian Sylvester on his home soil and to take the IBF middleweight championship back to Australia. Let me just say, um, the way I measure hand speed when I use the term, I'm not just talking about the speed at which someone can throw a combination. I'm actually talking about a couple of different things. One is the speed at which someone can throw punches after they put down their lead foot. Right? For orthodox fighters, their lead foot typically is their left foot. Right? And when they move to a spot, for southpaws it would be their right foot. When they move to a spot, you know, for me, part of hand speed is how quickly can they get punches off, right? Get to a spot, does it take them a while to unwind themselves to throw punches? The other thing that I consider to be hand speed is how fast can a guy read, react, and get the punch off when he's throwing a counter, right? Um, you know, read and react, that's very important as well. Now, while these two guys look like they have close hand speed, I'm just here to tell you that Daniel Giel's hand speed is much faster than Sebastian Sylvester's. They actually had a common opponent, um, Roman Karmazin. And I'll just tell you, Karmazin, in my opinion, got robbed in Germany when he fought Sebastian Sylvester. I thought he won that fight. I thought he deserved the belt. The uh, judges thought otherwise and called that fight a draw. So then Karmazin fought Daniel Giel. And in that fight, you just saw that Giel, who is blessed with athleticism and hand speed, Giel is able to fluidly, he's very fluid, just get to a spot, get off several shots, then back away. He can also counter when he needs to. Quite frankly, he's outside the box. His style is geared to deconstruct the other fighter's structured style. No one's more structured than Sebastian Sylvester. By that I mean Giel, from the outside, doesn't seem to be following a set pattern. In other words, he's very fluid. He's an athlete who's outside. Then he'll come in. He's not really an ambush fighter. He's kind of like Carl Frotch and Roy Jones in that he's outside waiting for you to make a move, but he keeps his hands up. He doesn't drop that left like they do. It's very frustrating fighting Gale because you're not exactly sure what you're getting. It's like fighting a cloud. Only Gale hits you with very hard shots and actually has a method to the madness. It's just a... Um, method that obviously is hard to describe. He has a good jab, but his real game is to counter you, to be outside, to come inside with fluid punches, to take whatever you give him. He's very light 
on his lead foot. In other words, when he moves forward like Manny Pacquiao, he can get off several shots, then he can back back out. Now, Sylvester is literally the opposite. Um, in Germany, they like advanced engineering. They like structure. Everything has to have a purpose. And whereas Daniel Giel will, you know, have his hands open and you don't really know what he's going to do. There's an element of surprise there. With Sylvester, you know exactly what he's going to do. European fighter has his hands tucked, so it's very hard to hit his body. Rarely removes them from his body. When you come in, he shoots a jab, right? That's how he scores his points. Then he waits for the jab to open things up, then he'll open up a bit, right? Moves in lines, whereas Gil, again, think jazz, is all over the place. You don't know which way Gil's going to move. With Sylvester, who's kind of like a classical uh, musician, he's moving in lines, he comes forward, he engages you straight on, he's shooting the jab, He's protecting his body. He's piling up points. Then, after the jab softens you up, he comes in with hooks, very predictable, and takes you out. His nickname is the Hurricane, right? The problem is, with Gil outside, his jab. I think Sylvester's going to find out that his jab can't land on Gil, right? Gil's an advanced fighter, right? So... Sylvester's going to come forward. His jab won't be able to land on Gil. Gil's going to force him to move around the ring. And as he moves around the ring, that's when Gil's hand speed superiority, in my opinion, is going to take over. Because if they move to a new spot together, Gil is wired to get off punches as soon as he drops his lead foot much faster than Sylvester can. I believe this is going to be somewhat of a replay of Hassan in Jikam against Giovanni Lorenzo. I'm expecting Gil to beat the shorter Sylvester to the punch all day long. I'm expecting Sylvester to get a little bit desperate. I'm expecting Gil to then be able to land hooks. In other words, fight the same fight that Roman Karmazin uh, fought against Sylvester. Only I'm expecting Gil to do it better than Karmazin did. Right? So I'm expecting Daniel Gil to pull the upset. It's a mild upset. I believe you get something like maybe a plus 130 or plus 140 on this play. But I'm expecting Gil to pull the, minor, the mild upset, but understand the risk involved, right? We're betting against the reigning champion. We're also betting against that champion in Germany, and I'm just here to tell you. I'm talking about the uh, Karmazin fight being, in my opinion, uh, skewed on the judges' scorecards. I can talk about some other fights. Um, fans of Dennis Lebedev. Uh, feel that he beat Marco Huck. It's very hard to get a decision in Germany. Right? So here, in picking the underdog, just understand the risk. If this fight goes to the scorecards, there is a possibility that Gil might win the fight in the ring, only to lose the fight on the judges' scorecards. So um, go into this with both eyes wide open. But I do feel that Gil will probably win this fight by three or four rounds. I just believe he is the better athlete. He is the more advanced fighter. I think uh, Sylvester, when he realizes that he cannot land his jab, is going to be in trouble. And if he starts to reach to try to land his right hand, he's going to get hit with several crisp counters. Right? I like Daniel Gil in an upset over IBF middleweight champion Sebastian Sylvester. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here on YouTube and visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. All I ask is that win, lose, or draw after the fight, you stop by and leave us a post-fight report in the comments and on my channel page uh, if you're a hardcore boxing fan. Thanks for watching.